Hi, welcome to the Career Refresh Podcast. I'm your host, Jill Griffin. I'm a former media and marketing executive turned career strategist and executive coach. I spent my career working my way up and through the ranks of global organizations and startups, and today I show others how to do the same. Join me each week as we discuss the strategies and actionable steps to leverage your strengths, increase your confidence, and develop your career well-being. Ready? Let's do it. Hey there, welcome to the Career Refresh Podcast. I'm your host, Jill Griffin. It is that time of year, friends. It's the back to school feeling. We get our new like office supplies and we get our new school calendars. I know I'm not in school anymore, but yes, I still have a calendar that starts in September and it feels like a new calendar year. And it's also the time that I think many of us start to think, all right, we've got about three and a half months left of this year. Are we going to make the goals that we set? We begin to reconnect those goals and everyone's thinking, all right, are we actually going to accomplish it? And do we need to reforecast or pivot? And then maybe even what this is going to have an implication for, for the next year. But I want to talk about goals and visions and how they support each other and why you need to get clear on both for your career. And I'm going to say something that's going to sound strange and maybe surprise you. And that's that a big career vision requires small career goals. Think about a vision as what you want to accomplish in your career. Vision is not a goal. Goals are the ends to the means. They're like the tactics, right? Goals get you closer to your vision. You probably heard the phrase or one variation of the phrase, what you focus on increases. So designing a vision is a powerful tool for designing your career and frankly, your life. A vision is a connected emotional statement. It's the visible cue of what you want in the future. A vision helps us imagine what a positive future could look like. And imagining a positive future is a helpful way to increase your positive emotions, your optimism, your motivation, all the positive things that are going to help us create that vision. So we know that when we take action from a positive mindset, we have a chance of success that increases by over 30%. So I'm going to say that again. When we take action from a positive mindset, we increase our chances of success by over 30%. And visioning is a valuable tool to help you gain clarity. Vision exercises, you know, think about it as a North Star or an internal compass that keeps you moving in the direction of your dreams and what you want to achieve, no matter how many unexpected distractions you have to deal with in your day-to-day life, right? The idea, if I'm in uh, New York and I want to go to California, I don't look over my shoulder to look at Europe, right? If I'm looking at a map, I'm looking forward. I'm looking across for the U.S. base, right? We're looking across the country. We're focused on where we're going. We're not necessarily looking backwards. So doing visioning and brainstorming exercises around your career is really one of the most important tools that I would recommend for creating the career that you want. And it all starts with getting clear in your why. Obviously, Simon Sinek said it the best, discovering your why. But so often clients will say to me that they want an opportunity or they want this career because they want to bring in money or because they want to have that, you know, that particular challenge in front of them or to know that they can do it. And I'm going to tell you that the challenge is not your purpose or your why. The money is not your purpose or your why. The end target is not money. The end target of like making that money is because you want a lifestyle or a freedom or security. It's something else. And if you are saying that your end target is you want to tackle that tough challenge, it's not necessarily about the challenge. It's about who you become on the way to that challenge. What did you want to see that your mental and physical ability can do? That is why you do something. Getting clear on that why is the most important first step. So your why is a sentence, it's a thought, you keep repeating that thought, 
and then eventually it really starts to become a belief. So when you get clear on your why, the how will come. So when people say to me sometimes like, oh, you know, uh, you know, I want to do this, but I don't know how. And the answer to how is yes. It's like, well, you got to try it and that might not work. And then you might need to try something else and that might not work. But if you're clear in your why, then those, those road bumps, right? Those, those speed traps that, that might stop you or slow you down, those mini failures become less of a big deal because it's like, all right, you know, I'll just figure it out. You know, even in running my own business now, I'm seven years post corporate and I loved my corporate life in media and advertising, but I also wanted to try something else for myself. I wanted to have a different lifestyle. I've mentioned before, I'm a traumatic brain injury survivor. I wanted to have a lifestyle that also supported what would be the most healthy for myself. And getting super clear on my why was really important. So yeah, I have failures. Trust me. Yeah, there are times where you know maybe I'm pitching a corporate project or I'm gonna do a big workshop facilitation and you know it gets delayed or it gets postponed. And sure that's disappointing, but then it's like, okay, what else do I need to do to create the next one? or to see what I can do to get that back. It doesn't, when I'm clear in my why, my why in helping leaders and the people that they serve create clarity, increase their well-being, increase their intentionality, increase their impact, helping with team dynamics, I'm clear in my why, then any of the speed bumps don't really matter so much. So I want you to think about visioning now. Like, you probably have a ton of photos either on your phone or maybe they're stored in a drive somewhere. And if there's a photo that's blurry or one that you don't like how you look, even if everyone else in the photo looks great, you're probably going to delete it, right? So you're going to continue to probably take additional photos until you capture the image that you like. You need to do this with your career and your vision around your career, right? So you want to be thinking about what is the photo or the image you're putting in your head about the future you, about where you want to be, and finding a future that looks really promising for yourself, what feels really optimistic and aligned. And that's where you want to be focusing, not on any of the past failures or the past things about your career that you're like, ah, I wish it turned out differently. Again, what you focus on increases. So you need to do this with your vision around your career. Imagine yourself, connecting with clients, collaborating with colleagues, partners, maybe even seeing yourself, um, you know, giving a presentation on stage. You know, the first time I gave a, a major keynote to over a thousand people, I knew what I wanted to talk about. And I kept envisioning the room, even though I had no idea what the room would look like. And I will tell you the day that that actually happened, I was like, I, I just, there was a familiarity because I kept envisioning what it would be. Right. And again, why do we do that? Because the more that we envision something, our prefrontal cortex, the front part of our brain, the thinking part of our brain starts to really Think about the vision and the specifics, right? And then the primitive brain, right? The party in the back, the back of your brain, that is based on evolutionary biology is always going to be shooting off a signal that you need to be afraid. But when you keep visioning something that's, that's positive and makes you feel good, then the primitive part of your brain calms down. Because you can't be thinking strategically and be in the fear. You can't be thinking about, you know, what you want to do in the future and also be feeling all those obstacles and challenges and think you're going to take action. So the reason why you keep envisioning something in the future that's positive is because your brain then starts to get used to it so that when you're actually in the moment where something like that happens, you feel much calmer. Again, evolutionary biology, friends, this is what's happening. So going back to like your why and your vision, when it's not aligned with your personal values, then achieving the goals is not going to give you a sense of satisfaction or that well-being that you're seeking. So I want you to ask yourself, what really matters to you? What gives you meaning? Who do you want to help? Where do you want to make an impact? Where do you want to spend your time? Do you want to do meaningful work? Meaningful work is an inside game. It's meaningful to you. Making a difference is an external game. It is making a difference to others. So keep these value-focused questions in mind because on the days when you feel knocked down or exhausted or you're maybe filled with some doubt, 
it's going to be really important to go back to that why to keep you clear and motivated. When we are not motivated, it's often because we are envisioning a future that is not better than where we are today. So again, envisioning a positive future is going to help you keep motivated to be able to ha- like handle when those knocks come along the way. The last thing I'll say about your why is you may need to find different ways to articulate your why to yourself because not the same, the same answer isn't going to work for you every single day. Think about the money, right? So sometimes it might be because the money will bring you a lifestyle change. Other times it might be because the money will afford you to make an impact in some way, right? They're connected. They're almost like nesting dolls of each other, but One day it might be about freedom and the other day it might be about making an impact. So having more than one why is going to be super helpful for you to be able to like sort of stay the course and and really stay within the overall vision that you're creating for yourself. So a vision can feel far away, right? A vision is big, but it doesn't have to be a vision that keeps you up at night. A vision doesn't worry you. A vision needs to feel possible exciting, inspiring, fun. It's the goals that should worry you, right? It's the goals and the steps and the milestones along the way. That's what's probably going to keep you up at night because you have to figure out how you're going to get those done. The goal ends up being closer when the goal is closer, I should say, is when the pressure starts to feel on because you're like, oh, I need to achieve this. I need to be accountable, Again, it's why a lot of people hire someone like a career coach. But so when you're working on your steps, the goals along the way will get you closer to your vision. And if you need to pivot, they'll also help you pivot because you're like, wait a second. I was thinking that my vision would look like this, but you know what? It actually want to fine tune it a little bit because it needs a little bit more of that. And the additional benefit here is that it helps your brain feel the smaller wins and accomplishment. When we're Going to accomplish things that we don't pause and have the win or the check off of the list, the small celebration, the brain doesn't really know in the risk reward cycle. It just keeps thinking we need to get the next thing and it doesn't ever like acclimate to that. Oh, we did have some wins here and we should feel proud of ourselves and we can take a day of rest and pause for a moment. The vision starts to feel achievable when you're having those small wins along the way. The smaller goals give you the micro win, right? They help sort of scratch the itch of your brain's reward center. And otherwise, you're going to constantly be in the anticipation of the goal, but never having the rewards along the way. You know, many of us spend the early part of our career all in the goals and the tactics. And yeah, you've you've achieved things, there's no doubt, but you didn't necessarily know where you were going. You were like, okay, I got this job and I, I you know, studied this in school and how am I shifting what I'm doing here in the day-to-day to get there, right? And that's why you need to have that vision with the smaller goals around the way. When you make a shift that accomplishing goals is elevating your vision, It really becomes empowering because you're not so rudderless. You feel like, okay, these again are the steps, the pebbles, the rocks, the boulders to get on the way to the bigger vision. And when you think about goals, there are steps, right? They're the how. And you may not know the how right now, but you got to try things. So one of my most powerful thoughts is thinking about like, this is done. I got this. This is going to happen. I don't necessarily know how it's going to happen, but I'm clear that it's going to happen. So again, you're sort of playing with the brain and then you need to figure out how to get it done. All right. So if you're still with me, let me take you through some steps. So how do you create a vision? Well, as I said, it's getting clear on your why. Then I also would reflect, you know, do some self-reflection. Reflect on your interests, your passions, your values, what um, what activities or topics make you feel excited or engaged or fulfilled, getting clear on your strengths and weaknesses. And to be clear, a weakness never becomes a strength. They're, by definition, they will never be opposite. They're opposite to each other, but they, one will never become the other. It's getting really clear on that. And whether you do something like a Gallup strength assessment, or even just really thinking about when you're in the flow, when are you really good at, that's what you want to be focused on. Understanding that will also help you articulate and lean a little closer towards what it is that you do and what you like to do. 
I mentioned before reconnecting with your values. So if you're going to be your own co-pilot and help you navigate, you really want to get clear on why the workplace values and why your values need to align with the workplace values. If you check out episode 41 of my podcast, I definitely talk about this and you can dig in a little bit more there. Also spend time envisioning, thinking, dreaming what you want your career to look like. Who will you be talking to, right? Think about your vision as like a GPS analogy. The GPS guides you to focus you to your, in your destination And sure, there's impact and joy and fun and excitement and failures all along the way, but it can help you stay really close to the goals and help you keep moving. The next thing I would also suggest is seeking professional guidance, whether you decide to hire a coach, work with a mentor, you know, do some trade time with a friend. If you're, if you're struggling a career path, then speaking with, you know, a career coach, um, a guidance counselor, if you're still in school, any of that will definitely help you with giving you some guidance and taking some career assessments. You know, it's some of the personality isn't permanent. It's some of the tools that I use with clients, but understanding that those tools and those assessments can help people even in the process of elimination, what it is that they like to do. And then, yeah, you need to think about the goals, the steps, the milestones along the way. And you have to try and experiment in order to figure out. Just make sure that you balance the goal setting with your inspiration, or you may lose your connection to the why. And remember, it's okay to not have the answers right away. The whole journey of self-discovery is an ongoing process and a process that, you know, you may start one where, and that is the right career for you now, and that is the right place for you now. And as you continue to progress and get more information, you're going to find another opportunity. Often people come to me and say like, you know, they have so many years left and they have to achieve X, Y, and Z by A, B, and C time. And there's a lot of pressure we're putting on ourselves. I would just say that, you know, I did not expect in my forties to leave corporate and start my own thing. That wasn't necessarily on my plan. However, I knew how I wanted to feel every day. I knew what I wanted to do from an inspiration point. I understood the impact I wanted to make. And I was open to, you know, what what the end product will say would look like. So again, focusing on your vision, getting clear on the goals, getting clear on your values, and focusing on how it is that you want to feel most days is where to put your attention. And then as you get out there and experiment and try and figure things out, you'll start to get more clarity. And if you want to work with someone, I'd be honored to be your coach. So I have all my information in the show notes. You can check it out, um, check out other episodes of the podcast, go to my website. There are some free resources there. And you can also learn about how to schedule time with me if you want to see what's possible. So friends, as always, I appreciate you. I appreciate you tuning in and listen. If you like what you hear, I would love for you to rate and review it really helps get the word out. It helps other discover other people discover the podcast too. And that helps me get my work out into the world. So I would appreciate that. Have a great week. And as always, here's to possibility. Hey, thanks for listening to the Career Refresh Podcast. If you're enjoying this and you want more information, go to my website, jillgriffincoaching.com. There you can find information on how to work with me one-on-one, or my group programs, or even bring me into your workplace. I'll put the link to my website in the show notes. But hey, listen, before you go, do me a favor, rate and review this podcast because it definitely helps me get the word out to people everywhere so that they can also thrive in the workplace. All right, friends, I appreciate you. I'll see you soon.